Hello, beautiful Sagittarius gang, Saggy Sun, Moon Rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your October monthly tarot reading here at the Intuitive Teacup. We are going to do two spreads, one for love and relationships, and then one for money, career, finances, things of that sort. So stick around for both. Please come into these readings with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to learn something and better yourself. If the messages that come through don't resonate for you, feel free to push them aside. You may want to re uh, revisit them at a later date. Sometimes messages make more sense in the future. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions because this is indeed optional advice, guidance, just an energy check-in. You always have authority over your own life and decisions. Uh, always trust your intuition above all else. That being said, let's get you some helpful, insightful messages. Here we go for my Saggy gang. I hope you guys are doing well. I always love reading for you guys. The energy is always more, more uplifting and fun. <laughs> there is going to be a little bit of background noise, by the way. If it's not lawn mowers, which I tried to avoid, it's now my uh, washing machine. So we're just going to roll with it, Sag. I know you will. I will too. All right, here we go. So I think we're going to start with romance unless this takes me in a different direction. You may have romance with an upcoming Sagittarius or feel feeling like you're in a relationship that is divinely guided. I love temperance showing up. It's sort of temperance usually represents Archangel Michael in most decks, right? Which is the angel of love, romance, connection. So it almost feels like something is being sort of divinely guided, written in the stars and, and protected by some sort of angel or higher being, if you will, whatever you're into in terms of a higher belief. All right, so then we start out with the Eight of Wands in your recent past. So coming back from a recent trip or possibly making plans for an upcoming trip. And then you have Seven, pe seven of Pentacles in the present. And then in the future, you have Queen of Pentacles. All right, so let's see. Some of you may have gone on a, a job interview, um, and it seems like you get the job, if that's the case. Um, that's just one scenario. <clears throat> Seven of Pentacles is about assessment of what you want and who you want to be, especially in, in this deck specifically. I'm looking at the imagery. Um, there may be, I said something similar to, who did I just do, Aquarius? A change in the way you present yourself. Um, there may be a change up in how you want the world to view you and see you. So there may be some sort of like identity change or identity shift or um, coming out of sorts, you know, whatever that means to you. Owning who you are. And sort of a newfound love for your body, um, whether, and, and I'm, I'm sort of getting the, the metaphor of like, that's been a, a bit of a, a, a journey for you, uh, metaphorically with this like suitcase, right? Getting to a place where you're loving your body and owning, you know, curves and all, however you want to say it. Um, and not only owning it, but like displaying it and showing it off. Um, it's not in like a tacky way. It's just, it's a sense of pride. And I think ease is a good word. There's a sense of ease and being at home in your own skin, right? Male, female, or whatever you identify with. Um, and it seems like that's taken you a long time. Um, but with that, you there's a love of self that's coming through that's really exciting. Um, and with that, I think you're going to attract people who uh, share a love of, of not just you, but also kind of mirror that same um, self-respect and self-love. Um, potentially with an earth sign, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. It certainly could be a multitude of signs, though, so do keep that in mind. Let's see, with your Seven of Pentacles, that has to do with Saturn in Taurus. So, over again, overcoming some sort of obstacles physically. Uh, it could be that you are someone who had a disability or an illness or, or possibly still has that. It could be something chronic that you live with every day. Um, and especially more towards Scorpio season, it may have to do with more psychology and sort of like mental energy of, you know, maybe going to counseling or working through some some traumatic issues in your life, wherever they stem from. Like that, it could be a million different things, right? But with that, it, with Earth energy, a long time coming, but feeling like you're actually making progress and chiseling away at at sort of the old version of yourself with Scorpio energy, which is going to kick in around like October 21st, 22nd. So like more end of the month, um, you know, with with that Scorpionic energy, there's this idea of like transformation and shedding of a skin and, you know, chrysalis to butterfly, so to say. And you very much seem to be having this sort of like. <clears throat> how do you want to say it? This, this coming out, that's sort of how I would say it. And for some of you, it may have very well to do with your sexuality. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. All right, let's see what else we can get from this. So in terms of what you need to let go of, what I see here is 
not only needing to, but the ability to let go of comparison, comparing yourself to others. I have to be honest, Sag, this isn't striking me so much as a love and relationship reading, so we'll get there. I know some of you guys were like leaning in for the love part. This seems to be about self-love. So let me just finish this message and then we'll talk more about partnership in terms of, you know, external people coming into this. Um, letting go of the idea of perfection and needing to look and appear a certain way, especially if you grew up in a household that was tremendously critical, critical of your appearance, the way you talk, the way you look, you know, the way you act, you know, the way you uh, express or, or don't express emotions. With the Saturn energy, you know, Time essentially makes you a master of something and you're becoming like a master of you. I know that's kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but it's like you're getting to know yourself on a more deep, intimate level. And so you're attracting energy, a.k.a. other relationships, too, um, that are, are going to mirror that kind of deep, soulful energy that you're looking for. The idea of sort of surface level beauty or what is it? What is another word for it? Surface level beauty or. Um, bells and whistles, I guess, you know, the extra stuff that like, yeah, sure, it's good to have. You're coming to realize like, I never even needed it. I don't even want it. I look at that now and I'm a completely changed and transformed person. So like, essentially what's coming through here is you, like you're coming out on top. This is the card of Sagittarius. So like, this is like a really cool message, you guys. I'm totally into it. All right. So this is like a, a little, you know, self-empowerment, self-love message. Um, and if you're not quite there, I always say this energy is available to you in this month, right? Not just this month, anytime you bump into this video. So if you're still getting there, if you're still working at it, if you've reached your breaking point, right? And maybe you're kind of in sort of the, the depths of sort of wanting to transform, but feeling overwhelmed, know that this can be your storyline, right? And it, it is up to you. You have to be the initiator of that. Um, but there is help available to you, especially within your faith, whatever that means to you when temperance comes through. Um, a strong card of, of faith, religion, spirituality, things of that sort. Um, and I will say with this sort of shedding of a new skin and coming into your own and, and feeling like a million bucks, I really want to underscore that. Some of you may find that you're at odds in previous relationships in your life. You may feel the need to distance yourself from family, but specifically a friendship group that was a little bit more like petty or superficial. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Spirit. That was the word I was looking for earlier. Um, yeah, like superficiality. Um, you, you just don't have time for it anymore. Um, and yeah, I just you're you're doing yourself up in a new way, and it's more tr more true than ever than uh, or I'm sorry, more truer than ever um, in representing who you are. Love it. All right. So in terms of love and romance, let's uh, let's ask a little bit more about that. <clears throat> so you may have um, recently gone on a trip with someone that you were dating, or or maybe you're already with this person. Eight of Wands typically uh, it involves long term travel, or I'm sorry, long distance travel. But I did say long term, so who knows? Maybe some of you are looking at property uh, in a different location. Um, so there might be a lot of back and forth travel to move into this new space with your sweetheart. That's for some of you. <clears throat> And I, I literally heard, like, I can see myself here. Some of you have been, like, manifesting a new place, like a new house or apartment or property, land, a vacation home, whatever it is. And when you go and check it out, it's like the vibes are right. It's like you walk through the space and you feel uplifted. And, I like, I'm literally getting this idea of you catching yourself in the mirror and, like, winking. There's something very playful of, like, yeah, I'm here. Like, I've, I've accomplished this. I've done it. This is going to be mine. So with that, there's probably a big sum of money going to this. Um, and it may put you at a distance um, from people you are close to, but I think it, where whatever this is, the space you're moving into, maybe it's a new office, right, whatever, it's tremendously healing. It feels like a sense of accomplishment, and it's like, I always feel like the universe is saying, you know, raise, raise a glass to yourself, you know, toast yourself because you deserve this. You, you've been working for it for a long time. <clears throat> To be honest, this doesn't strike me as romantic. I almost want to do that in, in a second deck. Um, so let's finish off with money. Um, this Queen of Pentacles is definitely a good money card, especially in, in, the, in the near future, right? So let's see. What else in terms of money? The Ten of Cups. My gosh, you have a lot to celebrate, Sagittarius. And the King of Pentacles. Look at that. Um, wedding vibes for some of you. Um, 
Ten of Cups, the King of Pentacles, and the Queen of Pentacles. Like, need I say more? It doesn't matter what gender you are or what you associate with, who you're looking for. The King and Queen of Pentacles, despite the gender, right? We can remove that and just basically say this is like a match made in heaven. They speak each other's language, right? And the Ten of Cups, it's like huge celebrations, anniversaries, accomplishments, promotions, um, you know, major life cycles, essentially. Uh, and it's emotionally fulfilling, right? Anytime there's cups, it has to do with love and emotion. Also, our intuition, our creativity, things of that sort. Um, yeah, this, I'm wanting to say like Barbie dream home. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to anybody out there, but something like that, something like that. Um, and so if you already are, are, are in a relationship, I will say, with the, this energy coming out, it feels like there's a couple here that um, <clears throat> are allowing the other person in the relationship to grow and evolve and change, which is very healthy, right? Sometimes we can be stuck in relationships where when we start to change, we feel guilty about it or that our person doesn't know what to expect from us because we're acting sort of out of the ordinary. And so this feels nice, especially with earth energy, which can be very like stuck and not wanting to change. There is, again, over, over a time, there's this really great progress and development that I see. Um, and I like that. You guys support each other. And my like, cash flow looks good. I mean, I was asking about money and you got King, Queen of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. Like, I don't know what this is, but it looks really, really good, Sagittarius. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is a full moon in Aries coming up um, at the end of the month, which starts off sort of eclipse season. Um, and for some of you, that's going to be happening in your fifth house of sex and marriage and well, I shouldn't say marriage, sex and babies. Uh, and your creative pursuits, your hobbies, your pleasures, your self-expression. Um, so you could be putting money towards something that you really enjoy. Um, uh, sort of, I'm trying to give you examples, but something like, I don't know, it's more than like going to a concert, but something that you would do for pleasure that may require a little extra money that maybe you've, you've been saving for, or you're finally willing to like, you know, bust out the rainy day fund. That could be something going on with 10 of cups. So there does seem to be a lot of money involved. If you're spending a lot of money, you do seem to have it, or it could be that you're acquiring a lot of money. Again, I, I see property focused here for a lot of you. All right, let's do a new spread. I'm kind of just getting the same old, same old, and I don't want to repeat the messages. Money looks good. I wish I could tell you more. That's all I'm really getting. <clears throat> there could be some uh, partnership at work, too. You could get some sort of promotion where uh, you have a more equal say or an equal division, I'm hearing, in, in assets or um, salary or leadership roles, titles, however you want to say it. Um, if it's not a marriage contract, it could be some sort of contract at work. The lovers. All right, let's talk about love. I feel like these messages want to come out just as they are. It's funny they're stuck. Isn't that interesting? Are some of you stuck in a rut? <clears throat> this lover's card is so sad. Someone's going through it. Let's see. And then four of cups. Some of you are worried about your child <clears throat> because they're very uptight and, and uh, very serious. It's like you have a child that isn't comfortable expressing themselves or showing and it's not actually showing emotion i think they do show emotion but they're very sensitive to their environment and so they're very stressed out and very nervous um, they have trouble like just unwinding and adapting to change um, with the ace of cups that will change um but it hold on i have to ask for clarity i know that's not for everyone <laughs> Four of Wands. They have a good support system, though, in their parents, in, in, in you guys. I'm assuming that's what this is. Or maybe this is you as a child, Sagittarius. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's inner work you're doing. Something about, a, yeah, like a very nervous child who has trouble adapting. They have trouble having fun, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep trying, obviously. And I know you know that, but... Eight of Wands is, is sort of, I, with these two next to each other, it's like learning to let go slowly. Um, you may be trying to like kind of thrust them into situations to get them comfortable with like new people or whatever. And I think the universe is kind of saying, you might need to take it down a notch. It's like you're doing too much all at once. So for a child who's super sensitive, it's, it's, it's not helpful in that you're exposing them to new things. It's like more stressful. It's sort of like you gotta take baby steps with this one. 
Um, and, you know, maybe this in some way has to do with your partner, too. If, you're, if your partner does struggle with, like, mental health stuff, it's possible that they have bouts or episodes where they get really depressed. And, like, again, maybe they're sensitive to their environment, so they're not wanting to go out as much, and you're trying to kind of get them out and encourage them. That will get better. Like, the Four of Wands assures me that there is a good partnership here. But it, the uh, with the Eight of Wands, the approach you're taking, it's too hot and heavy or it's too much too soon. Ace of Cups is like we we need to feel our way into it. We can't have this like thrill seeking fire roller coaster like energy of, you know, we're just going to, you know, drop our kid off at the playground and they're going to make new friends. And it's going to be great. Like your child will literally like just completely um <laughs> lose it like that's that that isn't helpful so be more mindful of your strategy and your approach with this person whether it's your child or your partner um, there is something very innocent and very pure and very sensitive and almost psychic about this person but with that they sort of carry the load of um having all these feelings and not always knowing what to do with it. So it's it's good to establish some sort of health, healthy outlet where they can express themselves. They're probably an artist in some capacity, whether they know it or not. You know, a writer, a painter, a poet, a singer, a dancer, whatever it is. Um, that outlet is very healthy for them and is something we need to maintain. Um, but with that, I don't know what else to say. It's like... You sort of have to take cues and signals from them of when they are willing to try something. And I know when you have a child, sometimes that's hard because it's like, well, they, they're they never going to want to, you know, burst out of their shell. They're very, you know, in their shell. Um, there's hope here, but you have to do it in a way where it doesn't sort of trigger their nervous system. Um <clears throat> they have very vivid dreams. I don't know why that's important, but that's coming through here. Um, and watch uh, the idea of too much screen time, too. It's like they're losing their, um, they or whoever this is, is losing their ability to fully integrate socially with people their age because they spend too much time, like, staring at a screen. You know, don't we all? But... <clears throat> I think this is going to happen slowly. You have to have sort of talks with this person about, you know, trying new things and <clears throat> kind of branching out a little bit um, in order to get comfortable in new situations and scenarios. <laughs> I'm so sorry you're not getting messages about love and romance, but we're still doing okay. We'll do one more spread. I think those are the messages that needed to come through. We'll try another one. All right. Four. Sagittarius. Love and romance. I hope I remember to timestamp these, but I probably won't. So if someone wants to write that in the comments, that would be super helpful. All right, here we go. Sagittarius, love and romance and dating and all those good things. Let's see what we can get. <clears throat> all right, so three of pentacles to the seven of cups. All right, this seems positive. This seems like... The idea of building a future with someone is piquing your interest. So this almost feels like a transitional stage where you go from maybe casually dating to being exclusive or you go from being exclusive to thinking about engagements. Yeah, I feel like you've gotten that message a lot recently, Sagittarius, at least in my readings. Obviously, it won't be for everyone. So let's see. <clears throat> Some of you are also, the idea of joining up with a team at, at work is piquing your interest, and I think you're probably going to do it, but it may involve um, travel, in which case it's going to put you at a distance from your family. Um, but it's a new opportunity to kind of make magic in the workplace and, um, you know, follow your dreams and passions in your career, um, something that you're very skilled at. Um, let's see. Others of you... <clears throat> This is a very unusual and unique message, but some of you are like taking a vow of celibacy, um, probably for some sort of, I would imagine, spiritual or religious reason. And that may be kind of very different uh, dynamic in regards to your upbringing and your family and sort of, you know, what you were taught to believe 
Um, and it might just be a change of belief system if it's not like adopting celibacy. Obviously, that's not for everyone, but there's something very specific in how you're approaching either relationships or not, or you know, not at all approaching relationships. That with with the chariot here, it, it has to do with like your upbringing and your roots and your past and understanding things in a different way and what's meant for you and what's right for you. Um, others of you, it, it may end up being like same sex partnership. Um, comes into the mix, and again, that may put you at odds with your family or something like that. <clears throat> but do you, Sagittarius, right? I don't got to tell you that. For a lot of you, this feels like marriage. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and travel always comes in for you, doesn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> and so with that, if you're joining... It, partnerships or um, entering into a new relationship. Again, there's a similar message of uh, being willing to let go of the past and things that were, you know, felt like a lead weight around you, things that held you back or made you feel awkward or uncomfortable or unable to fully open yourself up to another person. I think you've reached a point where you have a good match here or it's coming in for you, right? We'll talk about those who are completely single. Um, but are you willing to really leave the past in the past and, and if, and, you know, work on those issues, work through them so that they don't sort of become a problem in, in any new relationship you have, whether it's romantic, platonic, friendship, et cetera, right? <clears throat> for those who are completely single, someone is, uh, someone has eyes on you for sure. It might be an Aquarius might be someone you work with, <clears throat> especially for those who are in a, a career that involves healing or medicine, you know, nurse, doctor, and any type of sort of medical uh, worker, um, but also something more kind of like intuitive, spiritual arts, that kind of healing as well. <clears throat> it might be a Pisces too. Pisces and Aquarius are coming through. <clears throat> Taurus, possibly. Yeah, again, the, the idea of like joint money and finances. Join, some of you may be at the, in the process of like joining a bank account with, with your person. <clears throat> some of you got recognized at work. There was some sort of recognition um, and, and it caught... It could be someone who's new at work. I don't know if it makes sense to anyone. I feel like this is kind of like odd to me, but someone new at your workplace or that you would see kind of in that setting, a social setting, um, you got recognized for some sort of accomplishment or project or whatever it was, and it caught someone's fancy, and now they're kind of figuring out how to approach you, but they're also wondering if you're single. So I'm, I feel like they don't have that certainty of if it's okay to sort of, you know, be flirty and pursue something with you. So... I don't know. <laughs> how do you how do you make that known? I'm not really sure. <clears throat> I see you guys going on a, a, a date and spending time by water specifically. <clears throat> Something about watching the birds or watching the ducks. I don't know what that is. That's that's probably confirmation for somebody out there who needed it, but and you have the world, the two of cups. Yeah, some of you are going to get involved with a uh, Virgo, especially those who are single and looking. Two of cups is like early on in the relationship. Um, Virgo's looking good. Some of you are definitely moving in with your person or finding a second house or location with your person. Um, it's going to take work, but I think you're going to be very happy doing that. Um, some of you may work a job that has to do with house or, or you know, realty or designing or... Um, I don't know, something to do with property and land in, in any capacity. That looks like a, a, a job that you might enjoy flipping houses or something. Or that may be your person as well, too. Remember, these messages can always go in reverse in regarding relationship readings. Some of you may need to let go of uh, an issue in the past regarding a mother figure or possibly a Cancerian. Um, yeah, there could have been sort of neglect or sort of sort of like verbal abuse, like putting you down that really, uh, it stayed with you for a long time. And so some of you are still working through that. So it seems like you're finding a partner that, that allows you to kind of embrace who you are, warts and all, and, uh, and also sort of support you in changing and evolving and working on those issues. All right. I feel like we're, we are saying the same things over and over again. Yeah. Virgo, uh, maybe, maybe Gemini, maybe, but I'm getting more Virgo for dating. <clears throat> Let's see. 
Yeah, don't be afraid to take the leap on on moving, um, moving locations, even if it's just for, I shouldn't say even if, for some of you, it's just for a job and it doesn't have to do with romance and dating yet. But for some of you, it's putting you in, new, in a new environment and like the vibe is just so good. It makes you so happy to be there that it's kind of like a magnet. You're going to attract people who are, are kind of in a similar place in life and have that sort of vibe that you're looking for and would be a nice little pair for you. All right, Sagittarius, I'm rambling, rambling. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I didn't get tons of love messages, but I tried my best. <laughs> Here, we're going to end with an oracle card. So anyway, maybe some of you aren't looking too. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes the energy is just like, eh, I'm good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Whoa, too many, too many cards for Sagittarius. What wants to come through? Voyage. Shocker. Oh my gosh. Absolute shocker. I'm kidding. That's sarcasm. All right. The sacred landscape wants you to know. Get ready. You are about to embark on a journey. It might be an inner, oh, I don't know how to say this, sojourn or an outer voyage to a distant land. It might be a project or idea that is coming to life, sallying forth into the unknown. Where do you want to go? What have you always wanted to do or be? This is the time to make it happen. Get prepared, have a clear vision of what you want to experience, but also be prepared for the unexpected. That is part of the exhilaration of being a traveler. Remember to enjoy the journey as much as researching, I'm sorry, as much as reaching the destination. Oh my goodness, I'm tongue tied. <laughs> Mercury isn't even in retrograde. What's going on with me? All right, that is your Oracle card, Sagittarius. We'll do one more. <clears throat> I'm not up on my vocabulary, apparently. <laughs> All right, for Sagittarius, one more card to wrap it up. Anything they need to hear or see. Open, say yes, expand through extremes, <clears throat> excuse me, and trust life. Whoops, there we go. All right, let's see. Living and dying with your heart open is truly a courageous act, as if life well lived is full of losses and tragedies, as well as great love, triumphs, and adventures. When we're going through difficult times, when we most want to separate, the healing is often found in the connection, not the separation. When we close our hearts and shut down because the pain is too much, we often find ourselves more separate than before. The roses show us how to open to the world, no matter what the day brings. This card is here to encourage you to say yes to life, to expand through extremes, and put your two feet wholly and completely in. For your soul's inquiry, ask, how can you say yes to life? All right, Sagittarius, beautiful. I'm going to end it there. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.